morning again afternoon family welcome to the mental house with me your illustrious host Khadija today I want to talk about the racist origins of uh, US gun control um, and it's very important that we recognize that there were laws designed to disarm slaves freedmen and African Americans okay so um, what we're gonna do is try to go back put ourselves in the mind frame of master manipulators the projection the gaslighting um, and the narcissism that was so part of the landscape of yesterday is pretty much the landscape of today unfortunately so we as free thinking human beings have to acknowledge and have to deal with the past because those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it over and over again right okay so before the Civil War ended state slave codes prohibited slaves from owning guns after President Lincoln issued the Emancipation of Proclamation in 1863 and after the June 10th amendment to the US Constitution I mean and and after the 13th amendment I'm sorry to the US Constitution abolishing slavery was adopted and the Civil War ended in 1865 states persisted in prohibiting blacks now freedmen from owning guns under laws renamed black codes okay and I think it's important for some of my white listeners to understand that all this legis stuff that has happened to black people was done legislatively. So it's only going to have to be undone legislatively. So when you got a lot of white supremacists in those positions, your chances of making that a reality be, uh, get slimmer and slimmer. You will get a, a maybe a biscuit here and maybe a biscuit there. But it becomes real slim. And it is through codes and things of this nature that kept black people restricted. And it continues to this day. They did so on the basis that blacks were not citizens and thus did not have the same rights, including the right to keep and bear arms protected in the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution as whites. This view was specifically articulated by the U.S. Supreme Court in its infamous 1857 Dred v. Scott to uphold slavery. Dred Scott v. Sanford to uphold slavery. The United States Congress overruled most portions of the Black Code by passing the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The legislative his histories of both the Civil Rights Act and the 14th Amendment, as well as a special report of the Anti-Slavery Con Conference in, of 1867, uh, are replete with denunciations of those particular statues that deny blacks equal access to firearms. Um, Kate's handgun prohibition, prohibition and the original meaning of the Second Amendment. 82 Michigan, let's see, uh, that's uh, 83. However, facially neutral disarming through economic means will remain in effect okay so what they did was it said case handgun pro 
prohibition. Y'all help me with that word. Cause you know I'm really struggling with it. Pro uh, la, 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 la. Prohibition. And the original meaning of the Second Amendment, 82 Michigan, 82 Mitch, L R E V, 204 through 256 in 1983. So I guess that explains that the handgun prohibition um, and the original meaning of the Second Amendment. However, Facially neutrally disarming through economic means and laws remain in effect. After the adoption of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1878, most states turned to facially neutral business and transaction taxes on handgun purchases. However, the intention of these laws was not neutral. As an article in Virginia's official university law review called for a prohibitive tax on the privilege of selling handguns as a way of disarming the son of Ham, whose cowardly practice of toting guns has been one of the most fruitful sources of crime. Let the Negro board a railroad train with a quart of mean whiskey and a pistol in his grip and the chances are that there will be murder or at least a row before he alights. Comment carrying concealed weapons. This is some of the propaganda that they said about us. Again, the projection. Because they're the only ones that was getting drunk on trains and raising hell and whatever. Thus, many southern states impose high taxes or ban inexpensive guns so as to price blacks and poor whites out of a gun market. You see the manipulation? You see, you can't fix, you can't keep putting these patches on these bullet wounds. You can't keep covering up. You got to dismantle the system and replace it with a system of equality or just like all the other empires, this too will come to an end if we don't get it together. And um, history is undefeated. All the great empires have fallen. And we can't take a cue because we're too arrogant. In the 1990s, gun control laws continue to be enacted as so has to have the racist effect, um, if not intent. Police issue license and permit laws unless drafted to require issuance to those not prohibited by law from owning guns and are routinely used to prevent lawful gun ownership among, among unpopular populations. Public housing residents, approximately 3 million Americans, are singled out for gun bans. Gun sweeps by police in high crime neighborhoods, whereby vehicles and pedestrians who meet a specific profile that might indicate that they are carrying a weapon are searched, are becoming popular, and are being studied by the U.S. De Department of Justice as Operation Ceasefire. To hide behind certain, um, you know, mantras or certain uh, schemes, uh, and they use those things to unleash the unwanted behavior on the masses of the people, like stop and frisk and things like that. So, sample. Let me give you a sample: slave codes, black codes, economic-based gun bans used to prevent. The arming of African Americans in, uh, from 1640 to uh, 1995. Okay, so you know we already had 2021, so we probably can add a whole lot more, right? In 1640 in Virginia, race based total gun and self defense ban prohibiting Negro, slave, and free from carrying weapons, including clubs. So, to fight crime, some blacks attack on gun control. Now, 
I want you to understand this. We being terrorized, beaten, brutalized, and they prohibit Negroes, slave and uh, free, from carrying weapons, including clubs. 1640 in Virginia. Race-based total gun ban. That all such free mulattoes, Negroes, and Indians shall appear without arms. This is the statute at large. Being a collection of all laws of Virginia from the first session of the legislature. 1712. Race-based uh, race total, total gun ban. An act for preventing Negroes insurrection. 1712. Now, this, these are only people that's insurrecting, just like they did on January 6th. But all these laws that's created, when you look at them, are created for black folk. Duh! And poor white people. Insane. Uh, 1792, blacks excluded from the militia, law-abiding males, thus instilled with the right to own guns. Uniform Militia Act of 1792 called for the enrollment of every fleet free, able-bodied white man, citizen between the ages of 18 and 45, to be in the militia. And specified that every militia member was to provide himself with a musket or firelock, a bayonet, and ammunition to fight Negroes. I want y'all to see how deep and how far down the rabbit hole goes with these supremacists, these demonic in, in energies and the hatred that they have for black and brown bodies. I'm talking about black specifically right now. The 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 the, the codes, the laws, all this stuff preventing black people from moving, being having any semblance of freedom. 1819, South Carolina, master permission required for gun possession by a slave. Master's permission required for a gun possession by a slave. Uh, Act of December 18th, 1819, prohibited slaves outside the company of whites or without written permission from whites, from their master, using or carrying firearms unless they were hunting or guarding the master's plantation. These are laws, y'all. Y'all better recognize. 1825. Free and black free and free black homes search for guns confiscation. Section 8 provided that white citizen patrols shall enter into all Negro houses and suspected places and search for arms and other offensive and improper weapons and may lawfully seize and take away all such arms, weapons, and ammunition. Section 9 provided that a slave might carry a fire firearm under this statute either by means of a weekly doable license or if in the presence of only a white person. It goes on and on and on. Delaware. Maryland. The December 1831 legislative session, Maryland entirely prohibited free blacks from carrying guns. Wisconsin, 
race based total gun ban. In December 1831, legislative session of Virginia entirely prohibited free blacks from carrying guns. <coughs> Y'all getting the picture here? I had to get my coat. Yeah, it's black history, y'all. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You come all the way down here. I started at what? 1640, right? All right. Let's, let's just go to Georgia. Okay, because Florida is just off the chain. Uh, I mean, Florida just allowing, uh, it, I mean, acts, uh, passing laws, authorizing white citizen patrols to seize arms found in homes of slaves and free blacks and provide that blacks without a proper explanation uh, for the presence of the firearms be similar, similarly punished without the benefit of a judicial tribune. So no court, no nothing. The white folk did decide to be the jury executioner and the judge. Now you see why they got this mindset where they can storm the Capitol or do whatever the hell they want to do to us. Do y'all understand how deep this rabbit hole go? Especially you, a lot of you young people who don't understand this history of madness. And it seems like no matter what you do, you march, you march, you do whatever, but there's a construct that continues to keep you in a certain type of mind, a bondage? It's because it's in the framework, baby. It's the, the soil is dripping with all this bullshit. All these laws directed specifically for us. To keep us in bondage. To keep us in check. So every time we say enough is enough and black lives matter, it becomes an act of war for those sick White folk, those sick white supremacists, those white, fragile, emotionally retarded individuals. The ones who project and gaslight and lie. Oh, God. And lie compulsively. And try to piss on you and tell you that it's raining. So time's up. We have the knowledge. We know who you are. You can't fool a slave who you were and who you are. We've seen you in all your splendor. And so did John Brown. So did Viola Luso. Hell. So does Herman Dixon. Or uh, Robin D'Angelo. Tim Wise for that matter. Jane Elliott. Y'all have always had people just who is trying to point out to y'all y'all madness. But y'all rather listen to Margaret Sanger. Let me finish with these this, these black codes here. These race based to keep us defenseless against these white mobs and insurrectionists. Let's go to Georgia. Race based gun law ban declare that it shall not be lawful for any free person of color in this state to own, use, or carry firearms of any description whatsoever. Y'all know that? So when y'all go and talk about these people and how they wasn't this and why didn't they that this, I just want you to know that this is what they were up against just like we up against what we were up against. Respect your ancestors and the sacrifices that they made. 
up against this kind of madness. It wasn't them. It was the beast the whole time. Like it's the beast now. North Carolina, 1845. Complete gun ban for slaves. Act of January 1st, 1945. Made sale or delivery of firearms to slaves forbidden. Also in North Carolina, uphold free blacks could not, not citizens. So uh, the Supreme Court of the North Carolina uphold a slave code law prohibiting free blacks from carrying firearms on the grounds that they not even citizens. And our people had to walk around under these circumstances. Living, breathing, working every day, paying taxes, doing whatever. But they're not even a citizen. And they can be killed by insurrectionists and people of uh, militias who have been given permission by the U.S. government to kill you. This is the end of part one, and I'll be back to finish this off.